Good morning. Welcome to Milner Park Zoo and our beehives. Uh, my name is Peter. I'm the zoo curator. Behind the camera is Eric. Uh, he is also wearing one of these full suits like I am wearing today. So I kind of, last time we did this, I know a couple of you were asking about what you, we wear when we do these bee uh, videos. So this is a standard beekeeper outfit. It's basically a nice thick uh, woolen polyester coat with a nice detachable hood. Uh, as you can see, I wear my hat uh, with the hood on here. It actually helps keep it a little more stable for me. Um, we also have nice uh, lambskin gloves. Uh, so that way the bees can't uh, sting my hands as we're working. Um, normally you can actually wear regular pants, but since it's really nice and warm and we're in summer, we actually just have these net pants on to keep them from climbing up. I've been stung many, many times in the ankles. I don't know why they just find the spots. Uh, but anyway, what we're doing today is just uh, checking up on our beehives. Um, we have a hive here. As you can see, we have our smoker rearing to go. Um, so before I go ahead and open this hive up, I'm just going to toss a little smoke in there, help calm them down just a little bit before we open the top up. Um, the goal of today's video, uh, what we're trying to do is we're just doing a quick evaluation. Uh, we haven't given them much uh, food, supplemental food, because as you can see, everything around us is nice and green, which means they are fully able to go out and find food on their own. So we just want to see if they have any food left uh, in their food jars, and if so, we're just going to take them out. Uh, for the next few months. You'll also notice we have another box here with some uh, empty frames in it. If we notice the population is getting quite large or uh, they're starting to overflow certain areas, we're just gonna add a second box because as of right now, they just have their single uh, box that they, they came in. So we, we're kind of uh, anxious to see how much they've done, how much honey they've got, how much brood they have, uh, and really just checking them out. As you can see, they are swarming around us. Not swarming, but they are flying around us right now. This is a very calm group of bees. Uh, nobody here is trying to sting. Nobody here is being alarming. I don't have any on me right now. They're just checking everything out. Uh, very nice group of bees. Um, so we're gonna take the top lid off. And as you guys can see up top, there are a few ants still in here. Not quite as many as there were before. Um, and our food jar is empty. So that's a good sign. That means they have eaten everything we've given them. And now we need to see how much they've collected on their own. So I'm gonna take the lid to this off. Oh, and they've got honey building up on the roof. Wow. So look at that. So all of this is honeycomb. And we're gonna clean all that up. We're gonna scrape all that off, uh, set it off to the side so they can actually go out and collect it. This is a cluster, a cluster of brood. As you guys can see, it's capped over. Uh, there are uh, bees in there uh, getting ready to be born, but the rest of this is all honeycomb. And look at all these worker bees. They are looking great. They have definitely grown in population. I am very, very happy with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this on the side. We'll clean that up here in a minute. Let's check out the hive itself. Wow, look at this. I am so happy to see all this. Um, first things first, I am going to clean it a little bit. I need my scraper, which I had and set down and it fell. And it's here. So I'm going to take all of this honey off the top of the comb here and I'm just going to set it off to the side outside of the hive. They will actually fly out, collect this honey and bring it back into the hive. So I don't want to, um, you don't want to throw it away. Look at them go. Look at all that nice, fresh. You talk about organic honey. It doesn't cannot get any better than this. Look out, guys. Look out. And then once I'm done with this, we'll take some panels out and see what we got going on in here. <coughs> a lot of people are asking what we do with the honey. So this is a new hive. Uh, honey is the bee's food. Um, this is not yet set up to harvest or do production with. The first couple months of a, bee, a brand new beehive, uh, you kind of want to let them do their own thing. Uh, we want to let them build up. We want to let them collect and store on their own. The more honey they have, the healthier they're going to be. Um, so right now with the honey, we're not doing anything. Uh, once we get this second box set up on there, and once we start putting in a queen extractor, 
um, which basically will mean the queen is confined to only one part of the hive and the honey is in the rest of the hive, which makes for easier collection. Uh, then we can start to look at harvesting. Um, but right now, this is mainly just an evaluation. We don't want to take too much away from them. They're, they've been very busy. Uh, they've got a lot of good honey in here. They've got a lot of good comb development, it looks like. And we're going to let them keep doing that. So, oh, sorry, B. There you go. Yeah, some uh, who asked, uh, Jennifer asked if we give it to the bears, and we don't have any bears right now. We do not. We um, could if we had bears. At some point in the future, uh, once we get all of our hives up and going, the goal is to actually start selling this honey in our gift shop. Um, you are allowed by the USDA to harvest and sell up to 500 gallons a year. Uh, without a special honey license and since we don't have that many hives right now uh, we're no, not going to get anywhere near that 500 gallon mark so we're just going to pull some of these frames out just so it makes it a little easier so this is an empty frame we're just going to set that off the side here and actually the couple on the edges here are completely empty so they haven't fully expanded out yet they still have plenty of room to grow in this hive the, this frame here is empty. Now, what you see I'm doing here is I'm actually having to pry these apart because even though they're empty, they have actually started making wax and gluing them together to make it stable. So it is actually really, really tough uh, to move these hives, move these frames. All right, we are now at our first frame that looks like there's some development. And that's just a light honeycomb frame, so I'm going to leave that one. I don't see any brood on it. I'm going to find a brood frame to show you all. Oh, this is a nice one. Oh, that's a nice frame. Oh, wow, look at that. Oop, we got a little breakage. That's okay. So all of this here are baby bees. So you guys can actually see the larva deep inside the honeycomb there. And what happens is when the eggs are laid, they're about the size of a pinhead. And you can actually see smaller ones up in here. Uh, the worker bees will actually go around and feed those, and then right when they get a little too big, they put a little cap over them. Uh, and then once they're ready to hatch, the bees will actually chew their own way out into the world and see everybody. You can actually see some larvae here, more in here. So this means our queen is very, very active. We're going to see if we can find her. This is all honey over here, so that's food stores. Move this one over. Excuse me, guys. And this is a very calm hive. I am pulling them apart. I am going in here and not a single one is moving to defend yet, which is not a bad thing. This is a very nice hive. That's a lot more brood. Look at all these baby bees being made. Our queen is doing a great job. Oh, look at all these. This, this is just awesome to see. These are all, this is honey right here. Uh, you can tell by the color. Actually, no, this is honey here, I'm sorry. And the, you can actually see some brood. This is all brood. This is brood. All brood honey up here. We're gonna bend that down, put that back. I do not see our queen in here. They're doing excellent, huh? Let me fix that. Sorry, buddy. And I'm sure you guys can hear the bees and you can actually, when I take this out, I'll show you. Oh, this is a beauty. Oh my gosh. That is all brood. Those are all baby bee cells. And you can see some of the bees that have pollen on them. They've already been out harvesting this morning. So they're coming in to make more food. Look at all these babies coming. Man, this is a, this is a productive hive. I am just excited to see this. This is amazing. Put that one back. We are definitely gonna add the other box today to give them some more expansion room. Even though they haven't gone all the way through this one yet, uh, you don't wanna open and go into these hives too often. You wanna kinda leave them to do their thing. Um, but we'll go ahead and get them set up for some more. This is all more brood. These are all more babies that are on their way. That is just cool. Oh, that, that guy's got a lot of pollen on him. 
He's definitely been out working this morning. And more. Look at all that. So the life cycle of bees, I think we touched on this last time, but just to remind you guys, these are all worker bees. Worker bees live about six to nine months. Uh, they can live during longer during the winter uh, when production is a little slower. Uh, females or the, the workers are always females. Uh, queens, there's one queen per hive. A queen can live five years. She only mates one time. She mates, goes out after she's hatched on a mating flight. She mates with other drones and then she comes back and has enough uh, eggs in her to lay this many eggs over five years. Oh, we got some drones. So these bigger bees, that's not a queen. That is actually a male bee. They're only made during the summer. Uh, male drones, their entire job is to leave the hive and go mate with other queens to help spread genetics. This is actually just a nice big piece of fresh comb. Uh, I don't see anything on it or in it yet. There's a lot of space underneath. Our queen might be under there, although I just saw a flash of red under here. So she might be under this piece. So I don't know if she, if she is there. Maybe I didn't see, I saw something else. Uh, but if she comes out, we'll be able to see her. She is marked. Let's see if we can scooch everybody just a little bit. Just. Uh, I don't see her. That's okay. We're gonna keep going. We obviously have a queen. She's obviously very busy. Uh, she's laying tons and tons of eggs for us. She's keeping this hive nice and healthy. I am just, this is one of the best hives I have seen that's only been a few months old. Look at all these worker bees with pollen on them. They are definitely out there being busy. And this is a blank panel. So, okay, now that we've looked at all the panels, we looked at the hive, we've determined the health of the hive, which is excellent. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just prep it <coughs> for expansion. I'm going to put this empty frame back in just to make sure that they have a full house. They're able to move stuff around. So that just slides back in. It's a little harder when they're all covered in wax. That's going to be uh, It's because of this one right here. As you can see, this is a very sticky job. But these are some good bees. Very calm. So we're just moving stuff over to get this frame in. There we go. Now all I'm gonna do is actually just take this entire box, and we've already got a few bees on it, and just set it on top. There we go. I have just doubled their square footage. Their house has been expanded. So they will actually start coming up through the bottom, walking up in here and uh, building onto these frames. So we give them the templates. They can come in here and build what they want when they want to. Uh, when we are ready <coughs> in the future, we'll put the queen excluder between these two boxes. So that way all the brood will be contained to this box here and this box here will be nothing but pure honey. You don't want to go through and harvest all the honeycomb uh, together with brood because then you have, you're killing a bunch of baby bees. So we want to leave them uh, where they are. So the other thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to scrape all this honey off the top here. I'm going to put it over the side for the bees to get a little later and then we'll replace it. We're not going to add uh, any more liquid food. Uh, like I said before, we are in the middle of summer. They have got plenty of area to go collect from. Uh, so we're not going to supplement feed them for now. We'll check on them again in a couple weeks. But watch this honeycomb as I clean it off. So you guys are going to see the honey just start to pour out. I mean, look at that stuff drip. And this is wildflower honey. Uh, we don't have any like uh, specific groves uh, to feed with them. Excuse me. Um, so, ow. yep. 
so we don't have any specific uh, honey types for them. Um, this is all just wildflower honey. Uh, somebody had a question. Where did that go? Uh, Blaine asked if summer honey is lighter in color than fall honey it and why that would be. It depends on what they're eating. Um, so if they're finding pollen still in the fall and it's a darker color, uh, yeah, it can uh, have different colors to it. It also have different tastes. Uh, honey near orange groves. Uh, I grew up in Florida, so we have orange blossom honey down there. It tastes uh, like oranges, orange pollen. Uh, up here, it's uh, there is wildflower honey, which is different. There's clove honey, which is different. What they eat is uh, very dependent on how the honey tastes. So since we don't have a specific type, um, it all just has a wild flavor to it. So we're going to brush the bees off into their new home. Now the top is nice and clean. We're going to set this back up top. And now we're going to close this hole up. I'm still going to put this jar back, uh, but there's not going to be anything in it. That's just to keep uh, other things from getting in. We're going to brush the bees off the top. Put this back on. Make sure the lid is nice and empty. And there we go. We have now doubled their space. We have made sure that they have a ton of healthy babies coming, which is amazing. Uh, they have plenty of room to expand and grow, and uh, we'll check on these guys again here in a little bit. Uh, if you guys have questions, let's step over here. I kind of want to give them a break from us a little bit. This was a very good hive, very calm. Uh, I don't have a single bee on me, it seems. So they're just more worried about their uh, building their home right now. So do you guys have any questions? Anything I can answer for you about our beehives or anything with bees? Yeah, let's start at the beginning. We'll, we'll hit the questions we missed. Mike asked how many beehives we have right now. So as of right now, we have two hives here. We have this hive, uh, which is our outdoor hive. And then we actually, when the zoo reopens, we have a glass beehive in our zoo lab area. So you can actually watch these bees go in and outside, uh, build their own comb, build the frame. You can see all of this in our zoo lab building uh, all the time. It's really cool. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Uh, Charlie wants to know if all honey comes from bees. Uh, Charlie, that is a question I've never even really thought about. So um, all honeybee honey comes from bees. Uh, I'd have to do research. I've never heard of any other I've kind never of heard honey. Of either, but you know I what? Think... I don't want to be wrong, so I don't know. <laughs> we'll see if we can find out, but as far as we know, yeah, yeah. only bees make honey, and um, but we'll look into that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. My son wants to know how long we expect the hives to last. Forever. Um, I would love for these hives to keep growing until the. For, for years and years and years. So eventually the queen will die or the hive will get too big and will split into another area. Um, when that happens, we do have other hives uh, that aren't out. Uh, we'll collect them. Uh, we Our goal here at Miller Park is to actually have several different beehives throughout the city. Uh, bees are becoming a very uh, endangered species. Um, so the more bees that we have out there to help pollinate our crops, uh, our wildflowers, they're needed. Uh, so I would love to have 50 of these things throughout Wilmington and Norman. Um, but you gotta start somewhere. And this is a very healthy, good looking hive. I am hoping they're gonna make uh, many more hives for us. Okay, Charlie was also wondering if all of the brood that we saw were worker bees. So yes, um, there are two types of, uh, or three types of brood there's worker brood, which is the normal brood for all the worker bees. Uh, there's drone brood, so those bigger bees that looked like queens but weren't, those are the males. Their uh, brood is a little longer because they're much, much bigger uh, bees. I didn't see any drone brood in there, um, but there's obviously been some because there are drones in here. And then you have the last type, which is a queen cell. 
Uh, queen cells are much bigger. They're, they're about this long, uh, and they actually protrude out of the normal brood because they're making queens, and queens are much, much bigger. Whenever there's an empty queen, whenever there's a hive that does not have a queen, the, they will make queen cells. The workers will make queen cells and make queens out of the brood that the queen laid before she left. Um, they'll have, for a hive this size, 10 to 12 different queen cells in there. The first queen to hatch wins. She will actually go around. Uh, there can only be one queen per hive, so she will actually go around and rip all of the other queens out of their cells. She will chew them open and kill them uh, until there's none left. If two queens happen to emerge at the same time, they fight to the death. There's only one queen per hive. And then once that queen is a victor and there's no other queens uh, in the hive, she goes out to get mated. And then after her mating flight, which can be a couple days to a couple weeks, she comes back and this is where she lives for the rest of her life unless the hive splits. And the hives would split if it gets too crowded. Uh, the queen will actually take half of the workers and just leave to find a new hive. And the workers that are left will make a new queen and the cycle starts again. Okay. <coughs> Brittany uh, missed the beginning. She's wondering why we were scraping the honey off of the top. So Brittany, that was just to clean house a little bit. Uh, you know, whenever we go in there, I don't want to be ripping apart their hive every time by leaving uh, that honey there. So we actually just scrape the hive off to clean it up. Uh, we put the honey out on the side because the bees will actually still go out and collect that honey and bring it back into the hive so we're not wasting anything. It just makes it so that every time we have to go in there for any reason, we're not destroying uh, even more work of theirs. Uh, Mike was wondering if we, we pre-wax the frames to encourage build out. We do not. So uh, when we get a new hive in, we don't pre-wax the frames. Uh, what we do is we actually spray it with the same food mixture that they would normally eat just to encourage them to stay. Uh, but all of the wax that you see in there is from them. All of the wax that we have in there is uh, from that hive. Uh, Shay was wondering what other creatures are attracted to the hives and do they ever raid the, the, the hives for honey? So, not really too much here in Illinois. Um, you know, if a raccoon or something were to get really adventurous, they could try to knock the hive over or get into it. Um, bears might, but we don't really have that many bears around here. Um, as you can see, this was a very calm group, but if I were to go in there and really start rooting around and starting to hurt them, um, I'm wearing a bee suit and I got stung today. And I got stung once and it hurts. <laughs> Imagine getting into that with all those thousands of bees uh, and just getting stung repeatedly. Uh, it's not something you want to experience. Dominic, he's seven, he has a great question. He wants to know how far a, a bee can fly. A couple miles, down there. so uh, uh, one hive has the range to cover at least two, three miles uh, away for food, uh, for pollen. So um, this hive here can cover a large area. Now this is also a very large area. This We could have several of these hives right here uh, and still there'd be enough food for them. It's uh, not a worry at all. Uh, Kira said that Mexican honey wasps can make honey. Thank you, Kira. So, there we go. Wasps are good for something. We know a lot, but we don't know everything, apparently. Uh, Keisha wants to says, do you suggest getting your own hive if you have the space? If you have the space, the time, and the expertise. Um, they're pretty much set them and forget them during the summertime, but during the winter, uh, you gotta be very careful. You gotta help them maintain temperatures. You gotta feed them extra. It is time consuming. Uh, it is a little dangerous. You know, not every hive is this calm. I've worked some beehives where I could go in them without wearing a suit at all and just be completely fine. I don't know these bees well enough yet to do that. Uh, so I am taking every precaution. There have been some beehives that we've gone into wearing full gear and you get stung seven, eight times. It, it happens. Uh, every hive is different. Um, if you have the space and the area, not a lot of neighbors like it when you have beehives in your yard. Honeybees are very calm. They are very gentle. They don't want to sting you uh, because when they sting, they die. 
they want to uh, just live their life and, and make everything calmly. But you've got to do a lot of research. You've got to see if it's allowed in your neighborhoods. If you live in the city, uh, I don't know what the specific laws are on having a beehive in your neighborhood. Um, and then the rest of it's just the time to do it and the management. But if you can meet all of those criteria and you do your research and you think, hey, I want to get a beehive, I, I highly recommend it. It does great things for the environment and for everything out there. And the, the beekeeping community is very generous with sharing information yeah. and helping you. Find, find a local beekeeper and I guarantee if you start talking to them, you are going to just hear everything about bees for several yeah. hours. Uh, it's a really good group. It's I really think there group. might be a club or I, I don't know. Um, and there's probably probably if you call the uh, extension office they can help you out yeah. so um, if somebody's from one of those groups you can maybe tell us for sure but sure. Um, yeah it's it's fun to have these and if uh, Keisha lives in the country in Illinois you do whatever you want you can <laughs> yeah. I mean of them. They're great. I mean set up if you're if you're growing a little bit of corn or something or yeah. whatever if you have a field you can throw some clover out there and yeah. make your own honey clover or clover honey, excuse me. Um, Brittany has a good final question. She says, what can we do in our yards and gardens to encourage healthy bees um, without keeping bees necessarily? So, I know everybody loves to have a nice green manicured lawn that looks great, but they're not really the greatest. Uh, They're not really, a nice green lawn isn't always the best use of land. If you were to just take a third of your backyard or a nice big section, get rid of your sod, go get some natural pollinator seeds that have the milk thistle and the weeds and, and the flowers and everything out there. Um, grow them, grow pollinator gardens. They're, they're insanely easy. You throw the seeds down, you water it, you walk away. Uh, that's, I mean, you may have to water it a little more. Uh, don't just walk away. Um, but, you know, the aesthetics are nice, but they don't always help what's going on around us. So even at my house, in my backyard, uh, an entire fence line I have, I just weeded it one year, I threw down a bunch of seeds. Uh, I bought them at the local feed store. I think it was like 10 bucks for a, a two pound bag. You scatter them out, you water it, you let these natural wildflowers grow, let the natural grasses grow. Uh, and not only does that help bees, that helps all pollinators, butterflies, uh, other insects that need to feed on those things to survive. And then the animals that feed on those to survive. Um, look at doing that. It's very simple, it's very easy. And you're helping out a lot. You're helping a lot. Yeah. All right. We're gonna we're gonna go finish yep. up, take all these clothes off. Um, don't forget uh, to donate if you want to win that necklace that Grace made, and then tell your friends to definitely tune in tomorrow because we're doing baby goats, and they're adorable. So you definitely wanna going to want to tune in tomorrow and make sure all your friends are joining because it's going to be super cute and super fun. Awesome. Thank you all for coming.